going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We're back at Copart for another Copart walk around. Let's jump into this today with number one on my list, the thumbnail. That's right, a 2005 Chevy Silverado. I know, Silverado, it's an HD. And she's a nice looking truck. It's gonna have the four x four. It's gonna be, I think it's a 6.6 .6 diesel as well. This is a nice truck. It does have some hail damage. It's got 190,000 miles on the odometer. Let's start out by walking around. And the first thing that I notice when I'm walking up to this truck, I don't know if you can see it or not, but she's got the hail damage. And that's very, very common for the Midwest, guys. Uh, you know, the Northeast is all salt and rusted out. And in the Midwest, we get hail damage. So cars don't stand a chance really anywhere in this country, do they? They're just destined to get tore the hell up. Okay, so aside from a little bit of hail damage, some high miles, some dents and dings, let's take a look. Tires look pretty good, although I do see some chopping on the inside here. So we've got an alignment issue for sure or possibly a shock absorber issue. Maybe it needs a new set of shocks. It's got a, what are these? Cooper Discover AT, so all trains. We've got some Weston running boards. Got the tow mirrors, very, very nice. Single rear wheel. Got matching tire on the back with decent tread. Not, I mean, when I say decent tread, let me clarify. It'll get you down the road but it's gonna need tires. Okay, just to be clear, it's gonna need tires and it looks like it definitely needs an alignment or maybe a little bit of suspension work, a little bit of rust over there. This bed, uh, boy, <laughs> this is, this is tore, uh-oh. There's a drive shaft <laughs> under there. We've seen that before. This bed has a, uh, boy, she's seen a lot of work, hadn't she? she? She's seen a lot of work. I wonder if the tailgate still works. It does. It is beat the hell of back. But she still works. She's gonna rattle like a son of a gun too. Okay. Uh, it's got a full set of matching tires and every body panel on this truck has dents, dings, scrapes, scratches, nicks, gouges. Um, you've got a lot of outer wear on this tire. So like I said, definitely. Oh yeah, and that is so choppy. That is so choppy. Yeah, she's gonna need a little bit of suspension work as well. Well, it's not the prettiest truck, that's for sure. Uh, she's beat pretty good. Let's see what the interior looks like real quick. Oh, I'll tell you something about these old GMs, though. The seats. Ooh. Oh. Oh, wow. Are you, are you serious? Are you serious? Ooh. Oh my God, um, that's got my stomach turning. What the hell? Oh wow, yeah, yeah, that is, that is something. The interior is so clean. What I was gonna say before about got sick here, and I don't understand because the interior is beautiful. Beautiful, looks like it was, it was just loved and cared for but there is something foul in this interior. I, it's demonic, it's evil. Um, anyway, the seats are super, super thick and comfortable. God, I don't wanna get in this truck. I really don't wanna get in this truck. This thing smell, I, I don't know if there's something rotting in here or, or what the deal is. Good Lord. I don't, I've, I've smelled a lot of foul odors in these vehicles, guys, over the years. I've been doing this years, years now. Foul odors, it's not something that, uh, that, that's new to me, but I'm going to tell you right now, this is, oh, turn that off. Come on now. Oh, wow. Jeez, Louise. This one's really bad. <laughs> this one's really bad. She's got power. Whew. I'm sorry, guys. This is a this one's a very difficult one for me to film. It, it's it's making me physically ill getting in this truck. All right, let's fire it up. Let's see what it does. There we go. She probably lost her prime, which is why it took a while to fire up. What is that stench? 
Well, there's liquid down in here. Maybe that's it. It's. It looks like somebody tried to clean it up. This was probably a very dirty work truck. And somebody came in here and tried to tried to clean her up. Oh, wow. This is so nasty. Okay. She seems to run well. It started up without a jump. Important window works. Less important window also works. Yeah, somebody clean this truck up. The steering. You got tilt wheel. It works. She goes right into gear. It's in four low. Really? Yeah, it definitely feels like it's in four low. Let's put it in two. All right. Yeah. Actually, that's still in four low, guys. Uh-oh, it's not shifting out of four low. Nope. She is stuck in four low. I can hear it click and it just, sometimes you gotta push it a few times. There's a solenoid down there that sometimes can be a little sticky. Yeah, she's not coming out of four low though. Or four, four high, uh, two high, it won't. It won't engage into anything other than four low. So that's a problem because you're not going far in four low, guys. <laughs> uh, what's the max speed? About 10 miles an hour, and she's probably gonna be screaming. I'd say between 10 and 15 miles an hour, she's not gonna be happy. You can probably get under there and force it. Oh, she doesn't even try now. Come on. No. Okay. Well, that's for sure a problem. Let's try it again. Let's put it in neutral. No. Okay. So she's not going to come out of four low. That's not going to happen. You got a trans temp gauge there, RPMs, and your speedometer. You've got your uh, 190,000 miles down on the bottom. Oil pressure is really good. It's got a quarter tank of diesel. There's your engine temp and your battery voltage, which seems to be good as well. Let's go ahead and pop the hood, take a quick look. These trucks, these old Chevys, man, they tend to go for some pretty good money. So I'm not betting that this is one that we're gonna be able to get our hands on here, guys. Boy, she does run well, though. It sounds healthy. I'm not much of a GM diesel person here, so you guys, in fact, I'm not a diesel person at all, really. But you guys can tell me what you think of the 6.6 Duramax diesel. Truthfully, I have no idea. I don't know if this is a good engine or if this is, what the hell was that? It sounded like a gunshot. Okay. That probably didn't come out on the, on video, but it sounded like someone just shot something behind us. Yeah, I don't know if this is one of those engines that's like super difficult to work on. Is it super easy to work on? Are they generally reliable? I have no idea. I don't know. What I do know though is we've looked at it. It does go into gear, forward and backwards. Unfortunately, she is stuck. I would climb on the ground and take a look at the, uh, the drive shaft there. I'm curious. I'm very curious if that drive shaft goes to the front diff. I would I would almost bet money it does, but the ground is soaking wet, guys. We just had a ton of rain here. Let me see if I can get you under here a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yep. Well... That's for sure, there is no four-wheel drive on this truck at this point. So... She's got some problems. That's a fact. She's stuck in four low. They pulled the drive shaft out. Of course, uh, they didn't secure the caps, so the caps have fallen off. There's a one bolt, 
down there somewhere. Maybe there's another one in here. I don't know. But the caps fell off. You can almost bet money that a few of those needle bearings have come out. So uh, you just I just say new U-joints are going to be in order. And that's before you can find out what's actually wrong with it. So let's walk away from this one. Let's go see what else we can find. I'll bet we can find us another diesel. Next on my list, a 2020 Ram 2500 with the Cummins, baby. This one's got a little bit of frame damage. Boy, what a nice looking truck, too. It really was. Yeah, this, this, one's, uh, this one's hurting a bit. Let's see what these wheels are. They are race line with Nama tires. Nama Max Ploit. Max Ploit? Max PL AT? I can't read that. Anyway, what size are these things? These are, uh... Hell, I don't, even, I don't even see a size on them. That's crazy. It says 125R12PR. Oh, they are 35 by 12 and a half uh, R20 LTs. All right. Uh, let's take a quick walk around. Obviously, it's got frame damage and the fender's been pushed into the door. You've got door damage from where this door has been opening and closing into that fender regularly. You've got Lund running boards, full length running boards. This is crazy. I mean, it runs all the way from the front almost to this back tire i mean that is honestly that's way too far that's way too close to that back tire um and truthfully it doesn't look like it's far enough it's close enough to this one this this needs to come back this way quite a bit but anyway that really is beside the point at this point uh it's a sport bighorn four by four and of course cummins turbo diesel i bet this thing's got like no miles on it I'll bet it's got no miles on it at all. Look at the gaps here. You could fit your fingers through the gaps here. So that tells you what's going on with the frame damage. Uh, took a super, super hard hit right here. Uh, almost looks like some type of a parking pole that was sticking up, right? Um, it even took damage up here as well. So there must have been something. They just didn't see it. <laughs> they, drove, they drove into it pretty hard and pretty fast. You can see this frame rail. Truthfully, this one... <laughs> This one doesn't look nearly as bad as the other one. This one is definitely pushed out that way. And normally when you see a hard center hit like this, you'll end up with both frame rails pushed inward towards each other. But this one is actually pushed out that way. This one, however, this one is pulled in here hard. And because of that frame rail being pushed that way, that's why we've got the front end twisted and you've got this giant gap right here where you can literally fit your fingers inside of that gap. Um, I'll bet if you look in here, you should be able to see some frame damage. I would I would almost put money on it that we could actually physically see it. Uh, maybe not. That's impressive. I thought for sure we'd be able to see some damage in here, some, uh, a bend, a twist, something. No, I don't see anything. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Let's go over to the other side and see if we can find anything wrong over here with this frame rail. Oh yes. <laughs> oh yes, you can. This one you can clearly see. Let me get you guys in there. Do you see that? Do you see that crease right there in the middle of your, right there, dead in the center of your screen? I don't know how well that comes out on camera, but good Lord have mercy. That frame is tweaked right there and it's pushed over towards you guys heavily. Look at the sway bar. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Holy crap. I am really surprised that we're not seeing anything on this frame rail over here. It this section, it looks it looks unscathed. So maybe it's just the very front part of it. Maybe it's just the hook itself. It's hard to tell, but I mean I knew the minute I saw it there's there's frame damage, and that's pretty severe, guys. Uh, you can kind of see down in there. Not very well, but kind of. Everything is knocked out of whack on that sucker. What do you think? Deployed bags? I'm I'm thinking probably so. 28,000 miles? Yeah, 28,000 miles on the odometer. This one doesn't smell. This one doesn't make me sick. This is nice. Of course, it's a big horn, so it's not like a fully optioned Laramie or anything like that. Come on, open up. There we go. 
I know somebody just cringed when I did that. It's been done over and over and over again, guys. I'm not doing anything that hasn't already been done to it. <laughs> Comes with both keys, remote start, which is nice. Let's see what she wants to do. Preheat, and then she'll start herself. And here we go. Um, no? Oh, she runs well. Check engine light is on, understandably so. Um, most likely. I'm gonna say we probably got a boost leak somewhere. It's gonna be my, it's gonna be my guess. She runs. Uh, I knew she would. There's no reason for it not to run. Let's see if it wants to go into gear. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. You got two-wheel drive, four high and four low. You got your integrated trailer brake. You got some auxiliary inputs right here. What is this? You got you a little, little cubby hole right there. I love this about my truck. My TRX has this. Most of my Rams have had that little cubby hole there. That's nice above the glove box. And then this, of course, comes down and you got your Boy, there's lots of good stuff in here. Hand sanitizer, pens. Goodness. We'll go ahead and shut her off. I think it's not even the hood, dummy. The hood's over here. I think the hood is already popped, so let's go ahead and take a, take a peek under the hood. Yeah, yeah. Yep, oops. Yeah, this is going to be an expensive one to fix. That is for sure. This is not going to be cheap. There's that beautiful 6-7 Cummins. Honestly, up top, it doesn't look that bad. But, man, that frame damage. That frame damage is gnarly. There's no way that all this is still okay. I'm sure she's out of coolant. I'm sure she's out of coolant. I guarantee everything under here is just trashed, man. Uh, including, I'm sure, the radiator, the condenser, the intercooler. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure of it. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And I don't see anything leaking out from under it, so hell, maybe it's... Maybe the coolant's all right. There's the reservoir right there. Yeah, it's got coolant. I'll be damned. It's full of coolant. Okay. Hey, if you got a frame person, and, and this could be straightened or sectioned, uh, probably sectioned, because once, once it's been hit like that, it's weak in the metal. So if you, I mean, I'm sure somebody out there would be like, sure, we can straighten it out. Yeah, you could do that. But if you get in another wreck, good Lord, I wouldn't, <laughs> I'd be scary. That'd be real scary because it's going to fold right back where it already folded the first time. And I mean, it's dangerous. It's really, really, really dangerous. So I'm sure you can section these. <sighs> but again, I don't know. For me, obviously, this isn't something I'm going to tackle. But maybe it's something you'd be interested in. It's basically a brand new, almost, Ram 2500. It could be a good looking truck if you could put it back together. The lot number is up there. Feel free to check it out. Let's move on to something else. Last on my list, the 2003 F2 Nifty. It's the XLT Super Duty. Does that mean it's got a diesel? I honestly don't know. I think it's got a diesel. I'm, I should call this video a diesel walk around. I don't know. It could have the 5.4 in it. Or didn't they put something else in it? A 6... Was it a 6.2? Just a regular gas engine? I can't remember. Anyway, here it is. Let's take a quick peek at her. She's got the 4x4. Four four. She's red. We call this retail red. It doesn't look bad so far. It's got a nice long bed on it. The tires aren't the greatest, and it looks like it came out of a sticker patch there. That tire is absolutely covered in stickers. The tires will get you down the road for a little bit, but I'll be honest with you, I'd be looking to put a set of tires on it pretty quick. Okay, 186,000 miles. That's not bad either. I can The way I tell if it's a gas engine or a diesel engine, well, there's a couple ways. Number one, when you look at the dash, it'll probably tell you like gas or fuel. In this case, it doesn't. But if you look at the RPMs, generally speaking, a diesel is only going to go up to like five. 
six tops, but generally you'll be redlined in the fives or so, between five and 6,000 RPM. A gas engine is generally gonna be 6,000 and over. And I'm curious about what's under the hood of this thing because Max's goes up to a six. So I'm thinking this might be a diesel. It'll also tell you right here, it doesn't. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, comment below guys. Uh, your guess is as good as mine. I'm going to take a quick guess. I'm going to say I, I am really torn on this. I thought for sure this was going to be a diesel, but I'm going to say I think this is a gas engine. I do. I think it's probably like a 5.4. So drop your guesses below. Uh oh. Oh no. What's going on here? The hood is stuck. Oh. Oh, the hood is the hood is really stuck. That could be why, uh, yeah, that could be, that could be why it doesn't run. Oh my goodness. Okay. Give me just a second. See what happened. It looks like somebody's got something caught up under here. And now we can't pop the hood. Great. I'm not gonna lie, guys. That was difficult. <laughs> this hood did not want to open. Something's going on with this hood. The hinges or something are bent because this thing isn't wrecked. There's no, there's no damage that I can see. Not really. I mean, it's got a few dings and stuff here and there, but nothing that will cause that hood to be shifted so far over in that direction. So something is going on. I think it's just in the hood or the hood hinges. So this is probably why it was listed as a non-runner because they could not get the hood on. I'm telling you, I spent about 15 minutes here fighting this hood to get it open. Now, another thing that I do notice though, I'm thinking there must be some frame damage here that I'm not seeing. It's not just the hood. Take a look at the gaps on this door. They're almost, I mean, not almost, they are touching right here as well. Loose gap there, loose up here, but they almost overlap right here. Then you got the issue with that hood being off. Take a look at the gap on this bumper. Perhaps that's normal? I don't know. This frame rail right here is pushed this way too. Look at this. Look how heavily towards the passenger side this thing is leaning. So there's something I'm starting to wonder. Do you guys think maybe this thing was in a nasty little accident? And look how tight the gap is here. You can barely fit a hand under it, but on this side, I and this frame rail is bent down. I think this thing was in an accident, guys. And I think that somebody might have come in and thrown a front clip on it just real quick. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. This, uh, this ain't right. This ain't right. Uh-uh. Okay. So there's definitely something going on here. Anyway, to answer the question, obviously, there you have it. That is not a diesel. That is your old Triton, your 5.4. So, eh, you know, eh, <laughs> is it really a super desirable truck? Mm, not really. Uh, we got all kinds of stuff in here. What is this stuff? Like vape cartridge things? It almost looks like a cigarette butt. I don't know. We got some keys in here as well. Interesting. Um, seven pin energy drinks. There's all kinds of crap in here. Let's see if she wants to run. Let's make sure she's in park. She is. She runs. She does. Brake light is on. There we go. Brake light is off. We got an ABS light on. Air conditioning. That's a resounding no. Important window. Yes. Less important window. Yes. Not bad for a truck that says it's a non-runner. It's, it's what the big in on the windshield is for. It means it doesn't run. And it does. We got a whole stack of keys here too. There's a key to a house and a key to probably a riding mower or something right there. I don't know. Master lock. Some french fries. All kinds of good stuff. We're gonna turn that AC off because that ain't doing nothing but blowing hot air. Is it going to gear? Yes. Forward and backward. We'll put it in neutral. Let's see if we can switch it up into four high. We got four high and four low. 
we're in four low. Although, honestly, that doesn't feel like four low to me. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yes. Yes, okay. All right. We'll turn four by four off. There we go. Back in two-wheel drive. So, how's that steering feel? Well, uh, I don't feel anything binding up, but that is absolutely, that is absolutely disgusting. Yeah, guys, you know, so we know that it runs. We know it goes into gear, and it's listed as a non-runner. It's pretty disgusting inside and out. Let's rev it up. Yeah, she runs. That's... But there is definitely something going on with this front end. Uh, I'm not really sure what happened because with the frame rails being off, that one is so far this way, this one is pushed down and it looks like it's also pushed over that way. It looks like the whole front end has been bent that direction. Then you got this hood and when the hood comes down, the hood is actually facing the driver's side, but the rest of the body is facing the passenger side. Don't think for a minute that this thing is straight because it's absolutely not. The whole front end of this truck is twisted this direction. And that is why you've got no gaps at all over here, but you have gaps on the driver's side. You hear that? Oh yeah. Yeah, she's, she's frame damaged for sure. Does that make it an unusable truck? Not at all. I'm probably gonna throw a bit on it. It's cheap. Uh, it's listed as a non-runner, but obviously she runs just fine. Is the alternator charging? Yes, it is. 14 volts, so we can shut this off. Bingo, she still runs. She's full of coolant. The steering wheel works. So I have no doubt that this thing will probably go down the road. Um, it's probably going to crab walk. If you don't know what that is, look that up on YouTube and watch vehicles that crab walk. It's generally vehicles with severe suspension damage, vehicles with severe frame damage. They have a tendency to crab walk down the road. But take a look at this. Look how, look how far off this hood is. This is probably where the hood is supposed to be. And it's the front end of the truck, the whole front end of the truck that has been twisted the other direction. Uh, I'm not sure, but, but both frame rails for sure. That one's bent, that one's bent. Uh, it could be a usable truck for somebody, but honestly, it's probably not worth putting any real money into. Anyway, that's the last one. We're finished. So I hope you enjoyed today's walk around. Remember, I'm doing giveaways on a few of my cars, so definitely subscribe to the channel. That's one of the requirements. And follow me on Instagram. The link is below. That's another requirement to be entered to win one of my cars that I'm giving away for free. And stay tuned because we've got more great videos coming. I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to watch my videos. Thank you to Copart for allowing us to come out here. Till next time, stay safe out there, buddy. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.